just talk about uh, this things called algebraic uh, and finite extensions. Okay, because fields are uh, fields are about field extensions. So this case, what is the first thing to do? So first thing is uh, definition. Finite extension. So P is contained in F. Okay, something is not clear, then tell me. P is contained in F. And dimension of F over E is finite. Is this is this the definition clear? Is it understood what these terms mean. Fields. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, everyone. Yes. Okay. So this is vector space dimension. Okay, then if it's clear, then uh, if someone can give me an example, this is also denoted like this or wait. Is it denoted like this? Yeah. Example quickly. Q root 2 over Q. Okay. Q root 2 over Q. This dimension is 2. Right? And you can prove that. So you should now look for more and more examples. You should have a bag of examples. Okay? And you should look at any book. Dummit and Foot can look at. But one book. Follow one book. I am following Lang. Sir Lang, graduate algebra. So this is example. We will. Okay. But that's the thing you should keep in mind. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what uh, do I want to say next? I want to say algebraic extension. But, so this is definition one. You can also maybe note down the way I'm writing the definition. So you can tell me which definition number or something is needed at some point. But uh, it's, it's up to you. Definition two is algebraic uh, sorry, alpha in F is algebraic over E. So we are always assuming E is a field contained in F. May not be finite extension. That was just one definition when it is E. If Anyone knows? What's the definition? If algebraic, transcendental algebraic. If there exists a Polynomial, polynomial uh, uh, in E, right? E of X, yeah. such 
such that uh, I know. Uh, P right? P of alpha is zero. Perfect. Zero. Okay. Yeah. But just tell me one thing. Uh, is this the notation of such that or is this the notation of such that? There is some notation like that, right? Yeah, like uh, it's like uh, you have to invert the second notation. This uh, one? Not, no, second one. It's uh, this. Yeah. Ah, right. Okay, so I hope there won't be a confusion with there exists then. It's different than this. Yeah, such that this. we'll start using this. Writing such that is this is okay. Such that this is p of alpha is zero. So this p of alpha makes sense because p of alpha will be again in f because alpha is in f. So uh, e is in f. So any field is any if you. Field is just something where you can multiply and add, divide. Okay. So it is just. So P of alpha will always be there in the field F and it's zero in the field F. It is not a zero polynomial, but it's a zero when evaluated at alpha. And uh, this is equivalent to in terms of the first definition. Issue this is do for you can check it. This is equivalent to saying that is a finite extension. Okay, so I'll just use the If E alpha over E is finite. So now we'll start using this notation. I don't need to explain. It's nice, such a nice notation that self-explanatory. And this you should just prove it yourself. Okay. So we have an algebraic element. Now we have definition three. And again, you will have plenty of examples, I know. So and these definitions are just there so that Later, we can talk about things conveniently. Right? When two people are talking, any any matter, right? If they can talk conveniently, use a common language, then they can get further in the matter. Right? Anything, anywhere you go, any field, right? So in mathematics also, it's just like that. But Then the key concept, which is an algebraic extension. So there will be certain kinds of extensions. So we'll talk about algebraic extensions, then we'll talk about normal extensions, separable extensions, and then Galois extensions. Okay, inseparable extensions, and all the nice things will come. Okay, so yeah, so algebraic extension. Again, okay, just building on definition two. is algebraic if is said to be algebraic if is finite or all alpha, which is just saying that every alpha is an algebraic element. Okay, but algebraic extension doesn't mean it's a finite extension. Okay. But uh, every element is algebraic. So if you take every element and you just generate the field by that alpha generated over e you will obviously get a finite extension if it's an algebraic element so all these things are same so all these three definitions are related in that sense okay so there are no questions we'll move forward
Oh, so there can be a small problem. I am always using F is an extension. Lang always uses E is an extension of F. But okay. So these were definitions. And now there are some small observations. Let me just, we'll call them le, So here I want to bring in the concept of make things interesting. Okay. I mean, okay, you can you can do that, or you can wait around and you can talk in the end. Which you were saying it's up to you. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, we can talk later also. It's fine. So. Uh, so what was I saying? Yes. So now we want to relate the polynomials. Right? We want to relate the degree of the extension with the minimal polynomial. Okay. So again, this is there. So let alpha in F be algebraic. To understand why these results are true is very important. That doesn't necessarily mean you need to know, you need to know the proof, but you should understand why this is true, why they should be true. Okay. That will allow you to combine the results in the correct way, right? Which is important. So let alpha and F be algebraic over E. Okay. So, then we are saying that the, what is the degree of this? You know it's finite, but can you relate it to some other quantity? Right? And this is the degree of the minimal polynomial. It exists that you should prove first. Because it's algebraic, it exists minimal polynomial of alpha over E. So there is a minimal polynomial for your a linear algebra also. And you should see what is the, why, is, why the term minimal here is used. So you can use basic ring theory to show that there is a minimal polynomial, okay? Always exists. Or you can just do directly from algebra. So the degree of the minimal polynomial is the degree of the extension, right? So how do you prove this? So assuming the definition of minimal polynomial Assuming it exists, that's fine. We just want to explain why this is true. Okay. So it's very simple. So you look at this. You look at this. And this is the ring homomorphism. What is a ring homomorphism that you know? Just evaluation at alpha. So when we don't write, we assume that it's a natural one. Okay. Okay, Arnav has also disappeared. Connection. So this. So let's just call this evaluation at alpha. We have talked about these things earlier. Evaluation at alpha. Then what is the next thing to do? Is to look at the kernel of this. Okay. Look at the kernel of this. So kernel of this 
is equal to that minimal polynomial. Okay, so we'll just call it M alpha. Or actually, so Lang calls it P. So let me also call it P because it's good to stick to what he's saying. Because, yeah. So let's call it P of X. I mean, there are a lot of things because it depends on alpha, it depends on the base field. But uh, slide it where there's only one base field and one alpha going around. So, so the kernel is going to be generated by this. This is a fact. Easy to prove. Sure. Prove it. Certainly, Px is in the kernel because it's a minimal polynomial. But the kernel is equal to be generated by this that you should prove. Okay. So these are the small, these are the things which you have to work out and if you do it, it's important. So then, you know, by first isomorphism theorem, yeah, I'll also start using capital X like Lang. And so this is true by first isomorphism theorem. What is the next step? So you know that their dimensions, their uh, vector space dimensions will be same. But for that, you should what do you need to show? You want to you want to compare the vector space dimensions, correct? E e vector space dimensions as vector spaces over E. So for that, you need to show that this E V alpha is a vector space map. Is a vector space morphism. Same thing as maps, just the fancy way. E vector space morphism. Otherwise, you cannot compare vector spaces dimensions, right? You need to show that they, this map is a vector space morphism and uh, uh, this this kernel of this is a subspace. So all these things you have to show. Okay, so that's fine. So now, now we know that uh, the dimensions are same. Okay. So compare dimensions. So then you need to show that, uh, is it clear that uh, this, the dimension of this is the degree of the polynomial? Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Right, good. So everything is being used. Okay, everything is being used. There is an upshot to it. There is a, observation here which is uh, i don't know if you notice it this also implies that e alpha is a field do you notice the difference it implies that e alpha is a field because this is also a field homomorphism so if one side is a field then this would i mean okay i'm sorry this is a ring homomorphism as well it's a ring homomorphism and so this is also a ring isomorphism and if one of them is a field means some you can divide if it's a unit, then everything is a unit, then this side, this is also becomes a field. So this is also a field, okay? It's a, it, it is a deep, it, it leads to a deep fact called Schur's, Schur's lemma. It's a very deep result. It lies deep in commutative algebra. The, some some kind of converse to this, but right now you just see this is for free. E alpha is also a field, so you see that this was a field by definition, okay? But this is not a field. So what is this? What is the definition of this? 
think. <laughs> if you have a definition is good. If you don't have, then think. I have not defined it. I just wrote it like that loosely. Okay. You can just say it's the image of this EX and you can just take this to be F or whatever, whatever you want, right? You can work that out. So, but initially it's a ring, but it automatically becomes a field, which means you don't really have to add one by alpha by yourself, right? It is automatically in this, even though these are just polynomials in alpha, roughly speaking. But one by alpha comes automatically in this is a field. Okay. This is a field and it contains alpha. And so this further implies that this field is same as this field because, because you know, because this is the smallest field containing alpha. And this is a field containing alpha. And it is contained in this. So it cannot be smaller. So it's equal. And contains E. So this sort of thing. So is, is it fine? Is there any question? So this is some very basic uh, field. I means this is not just nothing. It's just you have to do the most natural thing. But the converse, which I was saying, which I was thinking, converse because you should have that thing converse. You know, it should be there. Uh, that really converse. called Shoot's Lemma. It's good to know. Well, I mean, you already can this you can take this as a homework. If E alpha is a field, Sure. So the converse in, is obviously true in in uh, for a single extension. If E alpha is a field, show alpha is algebraic over E. Right? You will do it. Yeah. So you have F. Alpha is contained in F. F is a field. You're taking E alpha, it automatically, if it becomes a field, then you can actually say that alpha is algebraic. You should show this. This is very simple. You should show this. Okay. But the converse, which saying that if you have a if you have a field E and you have a finitely generated extension. So because so if you attach which soon is what you'll come to if you have a finitely generated extension like this finitely generated i'm not saying that these are algebraic if uh, e prime is a field uh, then uh, then E prime is a finite extension, which means everything is algebraic. Okay. This is true. You should check it once. So you see what is going on. It, it's for several variable uh, version of it. And Quite of let's see, let's see. Schur's lemma field. Let's see. I don't know. No, that Schur's lemma is different. The Schur has many lemmas. 
maybe some other shoes lemma is disambiguation yeah there is an ambiguation so he has a Riemannian geometry also <laughs> okay there are many things he has done of course great sure but uh, yeah we need to find the result so it's there in atia mcdonald uh you should you should see like what is really needed and how it suddenly suddenly if you feel connected with commutative algebra and it really goes into um, it it again connects with the primes and so on which we were discussing Perfect. Everything is perfect. Hmm. Okay. This is what I was saying. So K is a field. Okay. So K is a field, which is what I started with. This B is a finitely generated K algebra, which just means that that B is K with some T1, T2, Tn attached and just generated as a polynomial ring you generate by just ring as a ring polynomial ring in several variables and then there will be some relations so b is a finitely generated algebra which is what that thing is when you have b k of alpha that's a single generated algebra if b is a field okay if you are generating as a ring but if it be algebra means a ring in some field then it automatically becomes a algebraic and finite extension Okay, this is the result I was saying. This is a deep result. You have, you have already proved one for alpha equal to one, I've given you for homework, which is very, very simple. Then you should wonder why the yeah higher things are not true. And according to this book, it requires quite some work. So, But uh, you should contemplate about why this. If you contemplate about this, you know you will get some very nice intuitions of this. Uh, let me not go into that now. I have also written about it once I read, wrote in a personal thing. I can share it with you if you want. You should think about this. Okay, so we have uh, six minutes. I mean, we'll stop, I think. I, we should stop. Right? But I'll just uh, mention one more result, which is probably the, if you want to know one result, then you should know this one for sure. I say that if you have... Uh, E in F K, these extensions, and then you probably, I mean, you know, everybody knows this. I suppose this is just the cannot forget it because you know it's going to be useful, <laughs> like direct <laughs> utility. So don't forget such things. And the proof is just just vector space counting. So you should just read the proof. Okay. Read the proof. Yeah. But is the statement correct? Is the statement uh, making sense? Huh? Vaishnavi, is it? I don't know. Sense what the statement is saying. Is there something that I should expand upon or? Hey, am I audible? I don't know. Uh, yes, uh -huh. it's clear okay so i suppose it's just yes. thinking thinking okay nice this is a very uh important result and uh so that's it i suppose we will just stop there and you see the kind of things that we have to do next is so this one we have uh, already proved that 
if you start with a field and then you attach an algebraic element, then the degree of this extension is equal to the degree of that irreducible polynomial. Just written in a different notation, but uh, check it out. Then there is, he introduces a notion of compositum. So what he's trying to say, start with the field K. You have two different extensions. Okay. Then how do you combine it? How do you talk about combination of the two extensions? So that's the notation he introduces, it does some very natural things. And then you, this compositum language is useful. This notion is useful. And you see, if it's a finite extension, then it's finitely generated. Okay. So for this, uh, finite extension should be finitely generated. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's kind of obvious. But we will see how, why he is using the language of comp. Yeah, because, yeah, so these kind of diagrams you have to start understanding. I'll, I'll try to exp I'll explain this next time. So, uh, he's trying to say, first time to understand. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so what is being said is something like you, see, you take F and you take K. So this is an extension. So everything is an extension here, right? Every time something goes from below to above, it's an extension. But uh, it's kind of very, very suggestive because it says that uh, the facts can be translated. That if you have F is finitely generated over K, then this EF, which you can roughly feel, I mean, it's given here, will also be finitely generated over E. Okay, so there's some, so when you go like this or like this, there is some facts which remain same. Okay, later you will, <clears throat> I see may, many other things I also remain same. So this very suggestive model to write things. And that's, I think, there. Then you have a tower of fields and proposition. Let's look at the proposition. Let's not be afraid to read the proposition. So uh, E is a finitely generated extension and everything is algebraic. Then it's finite. Why? Because at each stage it will be finite, right? That's what we proved. So it's a, just a iteration and that multiplicative formula will tell you that the dimension, how to this. And now this is some abstract thing, which is going to be very useful. Um, so we have talked about some kinds of extensions. They will generalize this to uh, some family of distinction if they have some property. This is like, uh, Maybe I'll tell you. And now this, this, this is going to be all are very, very easy, but you have to understand what he's trying to say. And then we will do algebraic closure, maybe third, third meeting, second meeting, I think. Okay. But you should please read from anywhere you read, but read. I mean, if you don't do the work, if you don't put four or five hours in this for this discussion, then put in, put in the time, put in the pure time, reading time or thing. So that's it. We'll meet on Saturday at 30 a.m. Okay. Plan and do the uh, work. Should, yeah, please. Uh, should we, like, can, can we have uh, on Saturday 8.30 p.m.? Like, is it possible? I'll have to ask Aryan. If, okay. And everyone. So I will mail. I will ask and see if everyone is fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Those who are coming, are they fine with it? Yeah. That's fine. We'll check. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes.